Because if you think you're just going to wake up tomorrow and go, today's the day I'm going to be consistent on social. Today's the day I'm going to go start a podcast. Today's the day I'm going to... You have to have it planned. You have to have a plan and you have to show up. Welcome, everybody, to The Chris Harder Show, where we are making you unapologetic about your pursuit of success, knowing that when good people like you make good money, they can then do great things. My name is Chris Harder, and several times per week, I will bring you epic guests, solo episodes, and every single tool, trick, and skill set you need to grow your business, grow your money mindset, and to grow your wealth to levels that you have never reached before. I've ended up in a unique place in life where I've got the experience, the connections, and all of the secrets that it takes to be successful. And I'm lifting the curtain to reveal it all to you in an effort to help put you in a position of abundance so great that you can then be as generous as possible. So let's lock arms and let's get started. And we're back. With another episode of He Said, She Said. Hey, before we even get started, can I just say thank you to everybody who listens and shares and like, you know, tags us in the episodes and all that stuff. It means the freaking world. I've been seeing it a lot lately and it just means the world. And I see you and I know who you are and just know that even if we don't comment back once in a while, we're super grateful for it. Yeah. I think that's the craziest thing is like when you're doing a podcast, the only way we get to see who's listening is through social media. Mm -hmm. So I just always appreciate when I get to see the people that we're actually talking to. Okay. So today we're going to talk about the five common threads that we see in Every client that we work with, well, the ones that succeed versus mm-hmm. the ones who continue to struggle, right? Because guys, at this point, for like five years, we've decided to open ourselves up to working with large masterminds, small masterminds, one-on-one clients, like you name it. We worked with a lot of people. It's crazy. I used to get nervous before um, a lot of our like masterminds or group coaching or things like that. And now it is, you guys, it is so universal what we all struggle with. It's like, there's no new story that I've heard. There's no new struggle. There's no new failure. It's We can really truly show up in a room or show up to a coaching session at this point and be like, yep, saw this before. This is what works. This is where you failed. This is how you, know, this is how you get out of it. Let me take a step further. We can, within a probably 99% degree of accuracy, say, oh, you're going to make it now. And to someone else, we can have the thoughts in our mind, oh, you're not ready yet. Now, here's the good news. Everyone can become ready really quickly. Totally. Everybody can quickly shift from, oh, you're not going to make it right now to being on the other side of the coin where you are going to make it. And that's why we wanted to share. Like, we literally sat down. We're having coffee tomorrow. Like, what are the things that people have yeah. in common? And we, we literally came up with five, like, oh, God, that for sure. Oh, God, that for sure. And that's what we're going to share with you. If you embrace these five things that the successful people mm-hmm. that we see them doing, then I guarantee it's going to shift your, your results immediately. Yeah. So we're going to jump into that. So number one, Chris, is enthusiasm and passion. Oh my God. Okay. It's my... I, I just want to say like, this means so much to me that I'm putting it as my... I'm creating my core values for light pink. It's it's my number one or number two. It's yeah. probably going to end up being my number one. And there's two ways to take this, right? So enthusiasm might be like, do I have to be loud and bubbly? Do I have no. to be like Gary V? Do I have to be you know boisterous and all that? That's not the kind of enthusiasm that we mean. Although sometimes that does help get your point. It can across. help, it helps for sure. you get seen. And so if you can harness that inside, I challenge you to harness that inside. But it doesn't mean you have to be that loud, boisterous person. Enthusiasm and passion means that when you describe your product, when you do your marketing, when someone asks what you do for a living, they can feel it in mm-hmm. your answer. They can see it in your answer. I mean, your answer might be something like, I coach people from zero to six figures in their online business. And it's the best thing I do. And I've been doing it for five years. Yep. And let me tell you about a client real quick who I loved working with. Like that's enthusiasm and passion. People work with enthusiastic people. Yep. When I am uh, looking for all of these teams right now to work with with Light Pink, if I don't feel enthusiasm or passion over what they do or over my project, I can't do it. It's even not going to work. Even if they're qualified. Can, can we point out? Even oh, if yeah. they're super qualified. Doesn't matter. Even if they're the best in business. If they're not enthusiastic or passionate, what, who do you work with? I literally skip those people and go find somebody who is. Exactly. So it's not enough to be good at what you do, guys. Like no, the in fact- The passion has to be there. I would rather take the person who's like, I am so passionate about this. Like I can see it. I can feel it. I'm obsessed with it. 
I'm going to make sure that this gets to blank. Like I would rather work with that person than the person who's like, yep, here's what we do. We've done this before. We work with companies like yours all the time. It's yep. This is the plan. And before you share number two, I just want to say right now, I know some of you are thinking, but that's not my personality. Guys, just like working out a muscle in the gym, just like working on anything else you want in your life, you got to foster challenging it. you to build this muscle, make this one of the parts of your personality. Because whether you like it or not, it's one of the biggest difference makers that we see between those who make it and those who just struggle and struggle and struggle. So I challenge you right now, become enthusiastic and make your passion so damn passionate that people can't help but feel it. Yeah. I just want to, I want to add one last thing because it's not like every single day I wake up and I'm like, oh, I'm so excited to be a passionate, enthusiastic leader. But that is the intention that I set as soon as I know, you know, that one of my team members is coming in for the day, or I'm going to see people who I need to show up as a leader as. And it truly is an intention. It's like, okay, you no longer get the luxury of just kind of like walking around quietly. It's time to show up and be enthusiastic and interested and lead. And you guys can do it too. So number two is messy action. This is my favorite because right. I'm, I'm the best at the mess. Okay, then tell us about it. Well, I think that when people are sitting and uh, sitting too long in a plan, that that is when I can first tell that they may not be mm. successful. When they are just trying to make that plan perfect, when they're trying to come up with something that no one's ever said or done before, when they're so afraid of looking stupid, I'm like, you're wasting time. You're literally, time is your most valuable asset. And as long as you have, you know, not, not thrown something out that you haven't done any, no research on, you have no idea. Maybe if that, it, there is a point where it's too messy, Chris. So let's talk about that for one second. What is too messy? What is the messy sweet spot? Yeah, like what's the mess sweet spot? Okay, I would say this. Don't just throw something out there and say, why didn't it work? I think the messy sweet spot is do your research, do your best to refine it, set a deadline. Mm -hmm. That's the important part. Set a deadline that you're going to get it out there even if it's not perfect yet and then get it out there. And if it goes great, awesome. If it goes poor, awesome. Because they're both just feedback. Yes. If it goes great, it tells you what to do more of. If it goes poorly, it tells you what not to do. And then you reel that thing back in, you make a couple of changes and you cast it back out there again. You repeat. Over and Absolutely. over and over. Because we see, okay, in our Fast Foundations, which is our zero to $499,000 earner mastermind, guys, there's hundreds of people. No, there's thousands at this point of people that have gone through that thing. Yep. And the common thread I see is someone will launch something and it falls flat. Yep. And then they'll reel it back in and 60 days later, they'll launch it a little bit differently and it'll fall flat and they'll reel it back in. And 30 days later, they'll launch it again and it'll fall flat. Yes, three times in a row, yep. it'll fall flat. And you're like, wow, you guys aren't very coaches, but hear me out. And then they'll reel it back in and we keep giving them answers. We keep giving them tweaks. They cast it back out there and all of a sudden, four bites, five bites, 10 bites. And these are their first customers. And now they got some feedback on, whoa, finally this one tweak worked. And they reel it back in and they make a few changes and they cast it back out again. And this time it hits. Now mm -hmm. here's the difference. Are you ready for this? Here's the difference. Most people, see, that was six tries right there that I just described. Most people, they stop on one. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have the courage to go back out for number two. Maybe, maybe they have the courage to go back out and get punched the third time. Mm -hmm. But they don't have the courage to try number four, number five, and number six. And that's why by the end of one of these rounds, you see some people who are like, now hiding behind their ideas with excuses. Other people are like, yeah, I got bruises. I got black eyes. I got everything. But I also got the money, baby, because it worked this time. Do you know what this is reminding me of? Oh my God, I'm having like a pure, like I'm so flashed back right now to my formu formulating my drink. Oh yeah. And I got my first sample of mm -hmm. my beverage in the mail and I cried. And I don't, Chris, I don't really cry very often. Nope. Like it takes a lot for me, especially over like a failure to cry. Like that's so unusual. And I think what happened is I was in uncharted territory. I've never been there before. And I thought that me describing what I wanted um, in, in full detail, which I did, like the, the process before that took a very long time. And I got my first samples and I did wasn't really prepped for what to look for or what feedback to give. They hadn't really told me that. So I tried it and it was just the worst thing I've ever tasted in my entire life and cried. And so I wrote them back and I was like, nothing is on. Like I, you know, it's not even close to it what I'm thinking. And they were like, okay, this is normal. 
They were like, this is totally normal. What we were sampling in this round was for this. So I didn't realize that in the first round, we were just looking for for something. And so from there, they're like, yeah, it normally takes seven or eight rounds before you even get something that you like. And so it was that moment of, if I wouldn't have talked to someone who has done this thousands of times before, that I probably would have stopped because I was like, wait, maybe what I'm trying to formulate can't be done. Just like you guys are thinking, maybe what I'm trying to sell or what I'm trying to do can't be done or can't be done by me. But the power of hearing this right now, of hearing people who've done it before, of knowing that it's all just feedback and casting your line out again and submitting it again and submitting your feedback and then trying again was so powerful for me because now I know I'm on round 15 and and finally I'm getting something I love. You guys, I I tried the first samples and when she was crying, I had to be strong, be like, babe, it's okay. It's part of the process. I was scared. I was like, oh, maybe we're maybe we're not meant to open yeah, this like thing. It was, was real bad. bad. <laughs> and then do you remember you got a second samples because it goes back and forth in the mail in the beginning. Yeah. And they weren't any better. No, they and were so, not. Ready so for what this? did Guess we what do? we did? We said, hey guys, we have an ask. Can we just fly out there to your formulation uh, factory and sit there all day for a couple of days until we get it right? Because it'll speed this up. And that's number three. Yep. Number three, the thing that people have in common that makes them successful is they are an unapologetic, unapologetic asker. asker or an ask hole. <laughs> <laughs> You're an unapologetic asker. And that's what we did. We're like, hey, I don't know if it's normal or not, but we're getting on an airplane. We're coming to your factory and we're going to sit there formulating really quick. And they loved it. And that day, two things happened. One, I got super buzzed because we're formulating an alcohol drink. Awesome. A lot of samples. And number two, a lot we of found, I would say within 90% of what our final formula was, yep. all in just one day's time. It was magical. And I got to work with a team and feel the power of collaboration. You were feeling the power of the wine base. I really was, but I was also feeling the power of number four of collaboration with the team. Mm-hmm. But I want to skip was... to number four yet, real quick. Number three. Uh, they're unapologetic askers. Yep. Talk about this quick because you're so good at this. Um, this is this is your biggest superpower. And this can also be learned. I was not somebody... Like, you guys, I, I come from a place where asking is like rude, where it you feel like a burden. Like, I grew up thinking that I was a burden if I wasn't anything but a value adder. And I know I'm talking to a lot of you right now because if you're a coach, most of you feel like the only value you value you have comes from when you can add value. Like if you can't add value to someone's life, I really want you to think about that for a minute. A lot of times that's the scariest thing for a coach or a teacher. Oh my God, I can't add value. How do I even hang around this person? What do I even do? And you guys, that is where the actual value for you is. You have to remember that you're giving so much value in other ways that that you're robbing somebody of the opportunity to give you value if you don't ask. Mm -hmm. So like Chris and I love adding value. We love being able to help our friends. And if they don't ask us, we feel like we can't, we, we don't get that opportunity. So you need to ask and give somebody the opportunity to help you. I think there's a couple things though that are really important to know about asking. Before you just go and find somebody who's maybe done it before or who's better than you at certain things, like get really clear on exactly what you're asking. Don't go into that meeting or that hour or that 20 minutes that you get with them without knowing what you want to ask. Learn about them. Learn about their zones of genius. And then get so clear on your couple of questions that you want to ask. And if you really don't know, I think the best thing you can do is say, I'm going to give you a quick overview. When I say quick, I mean, be quick. Do not waste this person's time. I'm going to give you a quick overview of where I'm at. This is what I'm struggling with. Here are my blocks. If you were me, what would be your next best step? What would you do? And I have asked that question a lot. And it, it really helps the person get clear on, ah, I see where you are. I see where you're getting stopped. Here's another person. Here's something you can study. Here's a book that you should read. Mm -hmm. All right. So number four then is when you ask for things, now you get to collaborate. Number four is the common thread that we see in those who are crushing it versus those who are stuck is they're all about the collaboration. And guys, write this down. Collaboration is the shortcut. It truly is. It is. Getting other people to fill in where you're weak, getting other people to give you ideas, getting other people to help you with your launch, getting other people to share your content. I mean, do you realize that when you see uh, like, content go viral on Instagram. That's not an accident. That's not just because someone had really good content. All of you have pretty good content. It's because behind the scenes, they're coordinating a 
collaboration of other people sharing it the moment they post it. Mm -hmm. And that creates the algorithm that pushes it out on everybody's feed. And when it pushes out on everyone's feed, now it gets more interaction and becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy of a viral or successful post. Guys, collaboration in your business, in your social media, in your marketing is the shortcut. Yeah, if you're skipping this, you're literally just shooting yourself in the foot because everything is going to take way longer. I always tell people like instead of focusing so much on your strategy, you should also be fo- you should obviously have a strategy, mm-hmm. but also focus on networking and collaborating and partnerships and you know, seeing what you can do um with somebody and collaborate where you're at. I think that what people get really confused on is they're like, okay, you know, I'm I'm this new business owner, or I'm I'm starting this new thing, or I'm launching a new course. I want to go collaborate with this person who's been in this yeah. for 15 years. Yeah. Jay Shetty, I go Lewis collaborate House. with Dean Graciosi and Tony Robbins. And yep. we're like, okay, hold it, hold it down there, Pirate Joe. I don't know. Pirate Joe. <laughs> it's what early. kind of course is he launching? It's early how to walking steal, the plank. How to steal booty off of ships. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a good course. I'll take um, that course. Um, uh, I'm thrown off now. But anyway, they want to collaborate with people who are 10 you know, steps ahead of them. The power of collaborating with people where you're at yes. is so powerful. And a rising tide raises all ships. So you have to remember that person where you're at has 3,000 followers, 5,000 followers, 10,000 followers who are all really engaged and they're seeing your stuff. How can you get three to five of those people to all start collaborating together and be, have this like mutual agreement that you're going to share and help each other with all of your stuff? Maybe you speak on each other's stuff. Maybe you teach on each other's stuff. You know, maybe you all share when a program is out, whatever that looks like. It is powerful because you guys are all going to rise together. I even see that in, in groups with me. I used to want to be a part of, like, when I was writing my book, I was like, oh, I want to hang out with Gabby Bernstein and Danielle Laporte and Marie Forleo. Okay, well, they're like years ahead of me. So instead, what I did is I found this group of people who were pretty much at my pace and we all grew together. So yep. we all ended up rising together. And now I know that we're that group for some people. I'm not saying I'm to that other level, but no, now but we're that group thing. for some people. You have to yeah. appreciate your peers because you're going to wake up tomorrow and you are going to be the next group that other up and coming people want to collaborate with. Yep. And if you don't appreciate your peers, guess what? They're going up anyways, and they're going to not collaborate with you when you didn't appreciate them when they were a peer. Mm -hmm, Totally. So collaboration, guys, is shortcut. Number five, the common thread in these successful people is? Consistency. And you were excited about this one. Well, I literally, I know it's so annoying. Like, I feel like every time we do like uh, five things, three things, 10 things, this shows up on there. And it's because it's impossible to talk about being successful at anything without doing it every day. Yeah. Like treat it like a hobby, get paid like a hobby. Or do you maybe not get paid at all, to be honest? Because there is something about, you know, people have to see you seven to eight times now to even buy what you're mm-hmm. doing. Like to even really like buy into what you're doing to click, to check it out. You guys have to think about that seven to eight times. Now, if people are hardly seeing your stuff anyway, how do you get them to see your stuff seven to eight times? That's going to be daily. That's going to be over three to six months daily in order for them to see you seven to eight times. And you know, if you look at the brands and the people who are doing the best, they're the most consistent people. Go look at their feeds. Go look at what they're teaching. Go look at how many things they're showing up on. I guarantee they're probably doing something on social. They're probably writing newsletters. They're probably connecting with people. They're probably doing an interview. They probably have a podcast. Like, Don't let it overwhelm you in the beginning, but let it overwhelm you and understand mm-hmm. that you need to get to that level of getting in your schedule to show up. Because if you think you're just going to wake up tomorrow and go, today's the day I'm going to be consistent on social. Today's the day I'm going to go start a podcast. Today's the day I'm going to... You have to have it planned. You have to have a plan and you have to show up. Okay. People know this, honey, but let me bounce it back on you. You know you have to show up consistently. Mm-hmm. but. We have bad days. We have a lack of confidence. We have streaks where everything went wrong. How can you show up on those days when you've got nothing left in the tank? Create safety nets. You have to create safety nets that catch you on those days that you have set in place. So if you, and something that Christine Hassler said that just really hit home with everybody on our last Fast Foundations call, people were like, yeah, but I'm, you know, there was somebody who was saying, yeah, but they're they're still afraid of judgment. And she was Mm -hmm. like, look, 
If you're still afraid of judgment, you're focusing on the wrong kind of pain. Like you need to find a bigger pain than you're focusing on. And so she's like, instead of judgment, why don't you think of the end of your life when you haven't done anything? Why don't you think about how this is going to affect your family? Why don't you think about the next you know, 5,000 days that you're going to wake up and be disappointed with yourself Mm. and not be able to look in the mirror and maybe your health is declining and maybe you don't get to hang around the people that you want to hang around or do the things. Maybe you never feel passionate again. Maybe you get depressed. Maybe you get anxious. Maybe you push away all of your relationships because you're not living into your highest self. Think of that pain rather than Judy Jetson online who is going to start judging you, you know? Judging Judy Jetson. I freaking hate her. Man, she is damaging. Get over her. All right, guys. So, Lori, recap these five again for us. We've got number one, enthusiasm and passion. Number two, messy action. Number three, unapologetic asker. Number four, collaboration. Number five, consistency. And do you know what these things have in common? Every one of you listening right now can do these this very next minute. Yep. The minute this thing is over, all of you can do this on your own. You don't need anything to start doing these five things. Now, if you want to do these five things better, what does help with that is someone else next to you who's trying to do it and a coach telling you, hey, we're going to meet every month and we're going to check in with you. And like the structure and the tribe around you Mm -hmm. helps you do these things. You don't need those things. Those things are like the steroids for the process. They're the, they'll speed it up. They'll speed it up. And we're going to provide that for you. We are launching our now famous Fast Foundations Virtual Mastermind one more time. And basically, it is the fastest way to build and grow your business in six months by providing the one-on-one coach for you. Yes, that's right. This mastermind comes with a one-on-one accountability coach and providing the like-minded entrepreneurs to you and providing the exercises that force you to collaborate with them and providing the guest speakers that lift the curtain on how to do things that you're wondering how to do them. Guys, I'm just going to go on record and say unapologetically, it is the greatest virtual mastermind in existence. That's why it sells out right away. And because it sells out right away, you have a chance to get a 24-hour head start Mm -hmm. before the rest of our audience does to grab one of those spots. So here's how it works. If you're serious about joining this thing, not if you're just kicking tires, but if you're serious about joining this thing, if you text me the word FAST to 310-421-0416, then we're going to give you as a reward $500 off that nobody in the rest of our audience will get and 24-hour head start to enroll in one of those spots before we open it up to social media and everybody else. And you're like, well, but wait, there's other people hearing this. That's because most people don't have the courage to put themselves on this VIP early access mm-hmm. text list. They're, by putting yourself on this text list, it's like committing and saying, Yes, yeah. I know I want to do it and taking action. And we reward action with the extra 500 bucks off. We reward action with a 24-hour head start to make sure that you get a spot. And so I want you to text me the word FAST to 310-421-0416 and I will give you those two rewards immediately. Yeah, I can honestly say uh, every time I'm in that group, I am blown away by what these people's businesses are doing. I The transformation that we get to witness is like literally life-changing, mind-blowing for everyone in there. And you guys, I would love to say you can do this alone and you can, but it is so much faster and so much more fun. And these people leave with, you know, like the the people who really get it, the collaborators, the collaborators in the group or the forced collaborators, they leave with 10 new people that they're obsessed with, who they work with all the time. They hire people in the group. They barter with people in the group. Mm -hmm. They trade services. Like you guys, this is truly a networking group who is all like-minded and ready to level up together. They hold each other accountable. It is insane. And we get to talk to each and every one of you. That's the craziest part. When you were saying, Chris, that now thousands of people have gone through this, we have personally spoken to just about every single one of them on our Q&A calls and answered their questions personally and heard about About their their personal business. Yes. Every month. Guys, I'm not kidding. It is the greatest one out there. I have no problem saying that even though it's our own product. So if you want to be on the special early enrollment VIP text list, and if you want 500 bucks off that no one else will get, and if you want to get that 24-hour head start to make sure you get a spot, text me the word FAST to 310-421-0416. And even if you don't, I love you. Thanks for listening. Keep listening. We'll keep giving you the tips. You can do this on your own. It's just more fun and faster with other people. 
We love you guys. Make sure you share on social so we can see who the heck we're even talking to. All right, guys. We'll Thank see you, you next time. Have an extraordinary day. Thanks for listening. And if you loved this episode and know of someone else who is as successful as they are generous, please pass them on to me. It would mean the world to me if you help me get this cause and this message out to as many listeners as I can. So please, if you liked what you heard, it goes a long way if you take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and share this with your friends. I'll be forever grateful. And until the next episode, cheers to your success.